cinema cameras. Whether you love them or hate them, they're one of the most essential parts to any filmmaker's toolkit. And while I am in a fortunate situation to own a camera myself without filing for bankruptcy, I can admit sometimes it kind of sucks compared to having a mirrorless camera. So here are five reasons why I think cinema cameras kind of suck. Hey guys, future me from the future here. I uh, just want to let you know the next couple of clips are a little bit weird, a little bit wonky. The camera that we were using uh, was kind of acting up that day when we were shooting. So the focus is a little bit weird. It didn't really want to focus all that much. So I'm going to be a little bit blurry and the Ibis was kind of acting up as well. So the clips are going to kind of look a little wonky, a little shaky. The information is still good, but if you have like super sensitivity to motion sickness, maybe skip like the next 30 35 seconds or so and you should be fine but uh with that back to the video now we have to get the elephant out of the room so for number one the size and weight while it's really cool to impress your clients when you're doing a shoot with how big and massive your rig is the reality is even for a super minimalist setup like mine with my fx6 simple v-mount battery one single lens and some audio equipment, I'm still looking at an entire Pelican's case worth of gear. And that's actually on the really, really light end. On a professional set, you can have cases for just your lenses, cases for just your camera body, a case for your accessories, a case for your audio equipment, a case for any of the additional random bib ops you need while you're on set. And at that point, you can't really get anywhere unless you have a minivan, which is why you see a lot of professionals with vans and trucks that's just full of gear. And if you're a run and gun person, that might be a deal breaker to begin with. And now that I think about it, I might just need to take my car. Oh, hey there. Reason number two. It takes significantly longer to do everything on a cinema camera. From setting it up, recording, black shading, and even doing post-production because it takes up so much more processing power on your computer. If you're not the type of person who enjoys the process behind doing this, a cinema camera is just not going to be for you. All right, look, a tripod. Well, I guess since it's here, I might as well set up my camera and move on to reason number three. So, reason number three, it's gonna be the price. Pretty obvious when you think about cinema cameras. They're either big or they're really expensive. Usually they're both. So just for the body alone on this camera, $6,000. If you're looking at the lens, in this case, I have the Sigma 24 to 70, that's another grand. Battery, 175. And it just goes on and on and on. And this is a really, really dumbed down version of what this FX6 could be. I haven't even gotten onto additional monitors you can put on, microphones, higher quality lenses. The sky's the limit, which is a good thing because that means it could be as cheap as you want it to be, but at the exact same time, it could also be as expensive as you want it to be. And for a lot of people, they really don't stop until their pockets are empty. Reason number four, it has to be the camera optics. Now, it's a positive thing when you're referring to clients on a set who pay money to see the type of gear that you can do and the type of work that you can make in. The bigger the camera, the more confidence they'll have in you. But the other 99% of the time when you're just trying to film a short 
flick or if you're trying to get something nice in a park or a field, you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. And by a sore thumb, I mean a thumb that's inflicted with gangrene and athlete's foot at the same time. There's literally no way that you're going to be able to walk around with something like this in town or at a park with other people and not get spotted out. And unfortunately, a lot of people are either camera illiterate or unable to realize that the world doesn't revolve around them. So they're going to think that you happen to be in every single shot they're taking. But I guess at the same time, you're walking around town with a $10,000 camera rig set up. So... Maybe it's the kettle calling the pot black, I don't know. But either way, I know that it can be a problem. And finally, last but not least, the last reason, reason number five. It's because compared to a mirrorless camera, you're losing out on a lot of features, but not getting that much more in visual quality. When you look at the FX6, you think, wow, this can do everything. And yeah, it does have some enhanced features for video making, but there's no built-in stabilization of any kind. If I remove the top handle, I have no way whatsoever to get any sort of audio into my camera, which is pretty much unheard of if you go back to the FX3 or the FX30, even the A7 III. So keep that in mind. And when it comes to cameras, it's just like with any other hobby. It gets exponentially more expensive for a very marginal boost in quality. And from what I've been able to see from a lot of other people online, even with an iPhone, you can make spectacular videos. But I guess it comes down to one important thing. Is this what makes you happy? And will it inspire you to be able to make more content? I hear a lot of other YouTubers saying that it's that magic sauce that makes it so that way it motivates them to go out and shoot films. Which, to a degree, I can kind of understand. If I'm rolling around with something like this, it's going to put me in the mood to make a lot more things than my iPhone can. But it comes down to the type of person you are. Are you someone who prefers the process, who is willing to deal with the pains in order to get better image quality? Or are you someone who wants things done quickly and can afford a very, very small drop in quality? It's up to you. I'm not saying that cinema cameras are bad by any stretch of the imagination. I love mine. But I'd be lying if I told you guys it was all sunshine and rainbows. So keep that in mind the next time you see someone rolling around with a cinema camera telling you how it's the best thing that ever happened to them. Because if they haven't told you at least one story about how the battery died on them, or about how an SD card magically ended up missing, they're lying. So, with that all being said, hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day. Like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video style and you want more cinema camera content. Most importantly, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.